Now that we have refreshed our memory onto recursive definitions, let's take a look at structural induction, which is going to look very similar to mathematical induction. So I'm going to start with a proof by mathematical induction, and that proof is of an example that we've already looked at together, where S is a subset of the integers defined recursively by the basis step that um, S, I'm sorry, that seven is an element of S, and that if x is an element of s and y is an element of s, then their sum is also an element of s. My job is to show that that set s is actually equal to the set of all positive integers divisible by 7. So remember, what I'm trying to do is show that two sets are equal to one another. And how do I show that two sets are equal to one another? I have to show that they are subsets of one another. So I have to show that A, which is going to be the set of all integers divisible by 7, which can be defined by A equals 7N, that that set is a subset of S, S being the subset that I've defined recursively, and then that S is a subset of A, and that will prove that those two sets are equal to one another. So notice I've color-coded them here. For the green, this is the proof. And this proof is using mathematical induction. So essentially, I have to show first that I have an element, <coughs> excuse me, I have an element A that, I have an element in A that belongs to S, and then if I have elements of A, um, that they all belong to S, essentially. So PN is going to be the statement 7N belongs to S. And again, that's just using this definition. The basis step holds, so remember, I'm trying to show that it belongs to S. The basis step holds because 7 times 1, which is the first element of A, is 7, and 7 belongs to S from the basis step of the recursive definition up here. We already know that 7 belongs to S. Then I'm going to assume P of K is true, which means, of course, that 7K belongs to S. So if 7K is an element of S, then 7K plus 7 is an element of S because 7 and 7K plus S are both elements of S. Therefore, 7K plus 7, which can be rewritten as 7 times the quantity of K plus 1 belongs to S. So essentially, I've shown that P of K plus 1 is true and therefore A is a subset of S, again using mathematical induction. So I'm halfway there and I have to now go in the other direction. The other direction says, let's look at the basis step. Again, we're saying that an element is in S, therefore it's going to be in A, that's what we're trying to show. So we start with our first element of S given in the recursive definition of seven. And we know that seven belongs to A since 7 times 1 belongs to A because of this definition of the set A. For a recursive step, we know x plus y belongs to S. Well, how do I know that? Because this is true. And again, I'm assuming that S, I'm showing S belongs to A, and so this is S, S x plus y belongs to S. And since 7 divides x and 7 divides y, then I can write x to be 7a and y to be 7b for some random values of a and b, it doesn't matter, which means I can rewrite x plus y as 7a plus 7b, which is written as 7 times the quantity of a plus b, which meets this definition, and therefore x plus y is an element of a. So I've shown both directions, and therefore I've proved this by mathematical induction. Now that was mathematical induction, we want to look at structural induction. So very, very similar. Basis step shows the result holds for all elements specified in the basis step of the recursive definition. And the recursive step says that if the statement is true for all of the elements um, used to construct new elements in the recursive step of the definition, then the result holds for the new elements. So it's really the same idea but this is um, specific to sets or defined structures. 
So we're going to actually look at a structural induction proof with full binary trees. And again, we talked about what a full binary tree looked like, but let's take a look at some of the definitions before we can actually look at a proof. So the first one says the height of a full binary tree is defined recursively as the height of a tree with one root is zero. So let's, let me use my very minimal space here. This would be my initial tree. So this is my basis step where I just have one little guy and they're saying the height is zero essentially because there are no edges connecting any of the vertices. The recursive step says, let's say I've got T1, which say is a tree that looks like this. And let's say T2 is a tree that looks like this. Oops, T2. Okay, and then it says, if I'm combining these, and we already talked about how those are formed. If I'm combining these, I'm saying let's take a root that's not connected to a tree and then combine those. And so the recursive step says if T1 and T2 are full binary trees, then the binary tree created has a height of one because this has added a height of one plus the max height of the other two. So this one had a height of one. The height of T1 was equal to one because there was just one essentially line of um, edges. And this height, the height of T2 is two because I had one height here and another here. So the new height of this full tree would be so the height of my new tree T would be three because the max height was two. So I sort of got to ignore this one over here and say the full height is three. So that's all that definition is telling us. The other definition is talking about the number of vertices and the number of vertices of a full tree, again, for the first, our basis tree is one because that's just this guy right here. There's just one vertex in that tree the number of vertices of the tree that's created by combining other trees is the number in T1, which in this case would be three, three vertices total. The number in T2, which is one, two, three, four, five total, plus one because obviously I added this guy at the top. So it's really just putting into a definition things that should be pretty straightforward. Okay, so I want to look at just one uh, structural induction proof with you. And this has to do with those full binary trees that I introduced to you previously. And it basically says, if T is a full binary tree, then this inequality is going to hold true. I wanna prove that by structural induction. So the basis step would of course be to show that it's true for just the smallest rooted tree that I can have, which is a vertex with no edges. And this obviously result holds true for that because the number of vertices of this little guy is just one and the height of this little guy is zero because there are no edges connecting it. And if I use that inequality, n of t, which is one, is less than or equal to two to the zero plus one minus one, which turns out to be one when I do the math. And of course, one is less than or equal to one. And so the basis step holds. The recursive step says my inductive hypothesis, basically, or recursive hypothesis in this case, is saying that, hey, that um, definition is true for T1 and T2. We're going to assume that it's true for that whenever those are full binary trees. So how do I prove that it's true? Well, now I have to do my actual proof. And again, I already proved the basis step before, but now I've got to be um, use a little bit of math magic and be a little fancy to come up with what I want. And so I'm saying that the number of vertices of T is equal to one plus the number of vertices of each tree. So where did I get that? I got that from the previous slide where that was just the definition of the number of vertices of T. 
is 1 plus the sum of the other vertices. Then I'm using my inductive hypothesis that says, hey, if that's true, I'm going to replace this with a less than or equal to, and I'm really just replacing n of t plus 1 and n of t plus 2 with what I defined them to be up here in my inductive hypothesis. Then this is what I call math magic because we're kind of pulling something out of the air, but I'm basically replacing this and saying because the sum of two terms is at most two times the larger term, I can replace it with two times the max of these two values um, minus one. So I've really just replaced the those two values with two times the max of those two values. Then I'm saying, well, that's, a, that's the same because the max of 2 to the x and 2 to the y is the same as 2 to the max of whichever those letters are. And so again, I've just done a rewrite. And then here it's just pretty straightforward. So 2 to the max of all of that means that's h of t because that's what the definition of h of t says is that it's the max of the height of one and the height of the other plus one. And then I'm just adding one because it's a two times that value. So really I've just added one to the exponent and I've ended up where I wanted to, which was two to the h, t, h of t plus one minus one. And therefore I have proved this. Up next, we're going to take a look at recursive algorithms.